we appreciate you. So stay with us here. I'm feeling the affection. All right, good man. So the rest of them will be coming back in, but we, we want you to go ahead. We, we want that last one where we, we were talking about the, the deficit. So, the deficit, so, yes, sir. Yeah, so you pick up there. Um, was there any questions over the deficits? No, we just prayed over that one for a okay. moment, and we move right. on to the next one, yeah. Uh, page 11, the next one's uh, internal audit, and, you know, we can't stress enough to get an internal audit function at DeKalb County to actually look over all processes, not just financial, not just school activity accounts, but all processes, financial, compliance and operations. They should be focusing on all of those areas. Use City of Atlanta as an example. You know, they got hit with a big operation with those text, test scores, right? Mm -hmm. You should have an internal audit process in place to look into operations. You should look into compliance, your federal, your state, local board policies, those compliance and your financial aspects of it which would include our board approved, you know, your expenditure being approved based on board policy, is access in place, you know, they, they should be making sure that the controls in place are operating effectively. That'd be your internal audit function. We can't stress enough to get an internal audit function in place. You go, go ahead, my dear. I do want to share, you're, you're saying I, you can't, you're saying get an internal audit function in place as if the district didn't have that. Yes, ma'am. The district has had internal uh, an internal auditor in place, <clears throat> well, at least it was in place when I came on board and have been here some time, and there were still issues that had not been addressed. What I will say is we will still have an internal audit function, but when we debriefed, it was my understanding that and I want to be clear so I can make sure that there were some um, there was some issues with regard to where different audit functions were sitting and they shouldn't have been auditing that which they were also responsible for. And so we have now disaggregated that and separated that so that <clears throat> The person who is purchasing is not the person who's auditing, so to speak, because that was the uh, issue I had. And we've done it by we've separated and moved some folks in some positions, and we did it within our budget. We did change dollar amounts and some of the um, assignments to positions, but we will have internal audit functions specifically based on your recommendations. I want you to know that. So. Um, I know there's some confusion about whether it's a director or assistant director or a chief, but the bottom line is if we had to do it within our budget, we, it's the function and we separate it. So I want to be clear so the board's clear that they don't think we don't have some internal function and controls coming in play, I mean, and people assigned to do that work in the district. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the clarification. We, we have two other people who want to make comments, Ms. Cunningham and Ms. Jester. Go right ahead, Ms. Cunningham. Dr. Uh, Atkinson, I appreciate that comment, but, but I also wanted to add, and I, I knew, wanted to get clarification or, uh, from that. As we went through the process of working with um, this recommendation that's been given to us, plus the rec I think Sachs took this same recommendation that was that was bought through this um, um, audit committee and charged us to, um, to hire someone or to have someone in that particular position. Um, then we ran into the problem of who they report to, how it, how it functioned, or how it flows from that standpoint there. And, um, you know, we didn't, I feel like we kind of halfway met that, but we didn't complete it, completely meet it because what, I, what I'm reading here and what that person was actually doing was like night and day. So um, now what I'm hearing from you, you've, you've uh, through our budget constraints and everything, we've, we've 
taken a different route, but you've incorporated procedures or a mechanism in there so that, um, if I heard correctly, we, you don't have the same people auditing themselves, and you got things in line, whereas the board will have something to look at or to see um, that this is being done within our, our budget guidelines as well as um, um, uh, bringing us up to date on where we are as far as the school system is totally because it's, it talks about um, the schoolhouse, but then you're talking about financial, you're talking about um, grades, you, all this that's listed on here. So if all that's in line, I guess the next thing I would look forward for to hear from you is how how you don't set this up so and how it function within the, the school system in the upcoming months or whatever and then as soon as possible so we'll know and, and be able to ask it, answer any question because I'm sure as, as SACs come back they're going to be asking us the same thing and, and, and now that this person's gone we, we need to be able to answer how we're functioning now. Um, well, I would like to just sh <clears throat> share with you, when I came into the district, um, I, I was just floored by what I thought was an excellent process around, he made mention of APS and the testing issue. I think DeKalb has a very good, stringent check and balance around its uh, test data and the procedures. And the state also has good ways now of verifying and giving you any red flags. So with respect to that, I think we have that really, that's a really, I think, fairly tight process. We are working on their recommendations around some of the other areas. And so we, at, when we get those um, people and or or when we get that system completely set up, I would um, certainly like to s share with the board what that looks like and what the reporting or the um, schedule of checks and balances is or will be. But until we get there, we do have some uh, yes. there are some things in, in place. So you know, as as we go through this process of hiring people or putting people in this position in position that we do have some checks and balances to make sure that we won't run into any issue. Correct, because we had more than one person dealing with the internal audit function. Yeah, your internal audit function should be outside of your normal control procedures. Mm -hmm. They should be above, uh, in addition to all that. So if you can think of it and put each division into a bucket, like finances in a bucket, you know, uh, title ones in a bucket, you know, and you, d you had your HRs in a bucket, payrolls in a bucket, you had all these different divisions in a particular bucket. If you had an internal audit function, a process in place, and it takes time to get in place, it's not something that, just like all this, doesn't happen overnight. Each one of those divisions or those buckets, they would do a risk assessment. They would list out all their risks, just like the finance people provide us you know, all the risks related to their area over not just finance, but operations and, and compliance. They would have the risks identified. They would identify the controls that have, in, that have in place over, hopefully they would use some sort of COSO model or something like that that has five components of internal controls and they would address each one of those components. So they would list each control that mitigates those risks. and as an internal audit function would come in, they would get those risk assessments, evaluate those risk assessments, evaluate how risky those risks are, how strong those controls, that are, how strong they're designed, and test those controls to make sure that they're in place. That's your internal audit function that we would like to see in place. Um, there's aspects of that in place. There's weaknesses in there that's in place like Dr. Axson said that yes they were doing you know they were doing part of their they were part of the control process in many instances where they should be outside of that control process okay. you as a board or you as an audit committee that's what you should be looking for is those risk assessments at each division level you know if you see those risk assessments are being performed 
and he's looking at me like, don't do, you know, it's a lot of work, okay? <laughs> it's not something that just happens overnight. This is something that it takes time over process, but this will strengthen your controls. This is the stuff that should be in place. This is the reason you should say, oh, why are we having risk, weaknesses, and internal controls? Because this type of stuff is not in place. At a board this big, when you have stuff like that that's not in place, there's where you get the control deficiencies. As a board, as an audit committee, if you guys look for those risk assessments and then charge that internal auditor or director, whoever plays that role, I don't care what you call them, to go and verify that those procedures are in place, your controls at the school board will be strengthened. You won't have these surprises come up and say, well, I didn't know that it was an issue. Because as a school board, you would be evaluating this on a continuous basis. You would already know about the deficiencies out there. We have two more comments from Ms. Chester and Ms. Wood. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Um, just um, Dr. Atkinson, for clarification, in my memory of two of the internal auditor <clears throat> that you um, when you came into the district that was in place. So I believe the board, I, I remember being in the audience at the time the board hired that person. That was at the end of 2010, I think. And so then they were in place 2011 going forward. And um, it, it seemed to be a couple of things. And, and, and Mr. Cunningham is right. It was, uh, it was done out of um, a response to the SACS list of requirements they wanted us to have. They wanted us to have an internal audit. There were like seven things on that list. I think that's right. So that was one of them. And, and then subsequent to that, I, it was very curious. It, it, we were then told you've got to have a strong delineation to the board. There was a, a, a they, they must be reportable back to the board, not necessarily through the superintendent, but it have its own line. And then SACS, subsequent to that, changed that view, in my opinion, and started backtracking and saying, well, no, you could have your reporting some other way it could go through. And I, I think that was a response to the fact we have new administration here, and I think they were trying to be supportive of your restructuring. But I, I recall very specifically different um, advice from them about that. Um, Mr. Cunningham shaking his head. Yeah, he, I'm guessing that you did as well. So. They hired him, and then I have to say, um, then I was very disappointed in the um, what we didn't get reports. We didn't get uh, nothing was generated on a regular basis to us. They set up the hotline to report things, and then he proceeded to um, investigate cash handling situations in high schools, which while I absolutely respect the, the need to, to want to make sure that goes well for, for parents and schools, I, I thought, you know, we're missing the big things here. And I asked him publicly at several meetings when he was going to get to that, and, and then we stopped seeing him at public meetings give uh, reports. So I would, you know, I'm really, um, you know, at some point, so I'm just just saying this at some point we'll when we're going to have our stated monthly meetings I'm going to start asking that question monthly where is our um, where are our audit reports where what are we hearing about that now I know you're getting that in, in and I, and I totally respect what we're hearing from the state here that it takes a long time to put those processes in place. It's not overnight, and I respect that, and I will communicate that to the public with my questions, but I'm going to start asking those questions because I think just like we need to set up a policy about hearing the state audits, exit conference findings, we need to start doing them. We're, we're going to have to get in the habit of it. So um, that's the history as I see it, and if anybody remembers it differently, let me know, but I, I think that's going to be critical critical. Um, and, and he was never the internal auditor. I don't know that he was ever tasked with looking at the scope of things that you've identified about all the controls. That, that I, and, and of course, it can't be just one person. And, and you can't audit your own department, like you were saying, Dr. Atkinson. So all these things you know, um, come together. And, and I'm glad that your new staff is looking at the design of that. And I'm, I'm, I, you're building credibility with me on that, absolutely, I, I, and I appreciate it. So I'm going to look forward to, to asking those questions so the public can hear that as well. Okay. <coughs> Ms. Wood? I'm going to ask this one more time, and this goes to uh, our CFO, Mr. Perone. How, and I'm going to write this down, how many staff members do you have in your department? 
Good afternoon. Um, we have uh, approximately 27 right now. Okay. And the reason I'm asking you that, um, are, do you feel that you can train them to accomplish what is being uh, notated here? Well, actually, what we're talking about now and in the internal auditing is no longer in uh, the finance department. I think that was one of the reasons and one of the uh, takeaways from this. They are now uh, in another department because the internal audit and the um, purchasing were in the same area reporting to the same person and they wanted to break that out. So that was done. So, the, so that would be, a, in terms of training on the internal audit side, would be a question for... Um, I'm really to, talking to, about the whole gamut of this. I'm not just talking about one little section. The, the overall <laughs> audit and all the different findings, though, absolutely. I think we'll, we'll be a team. I mean, this is going to be a district effort. We're all going to have to pull together. You saw that some of the findings were in IT. Uh, there's a lot in finance. There's a lot in uh, internal auditing. So what we, what we really need to do is uh, take the these findings and then develop an audit committee team and then monitor and then on a monthly basis report back as to where we are on each one and it be yellow, uh, red, green, and yellow. Green, you have completed, you're done, yellow, you, and, w and we could do that. And we've done that in the, uh, my previous district. And then at the end, you, you may not get to all of them. And the next year's audit might come up with some more. You put them all together, you just continue. It's a continuous process. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Th this 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 item is very specific. It says internal audits not independent of purchase card process, and I'm aware of the uh, situation you had that the state had with Georgia Tech on them purchase cards and how they got out of line. Uh, because they didn't have somebody monitoring them to make certain that the use was for uh, educational purposes. And the people, when they finally started checking them, saw that people had been purchasing everything with those credit cards. And, and, and I know that we have some credit cards. And I know you also say something that's very critical here, is that a, an effective internal auditor need to be independent from internal control so that he or she can say, uh, no, this card cannot be used for that. No, you cannot spend this card for that. No, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be done. Yes, this is the way it's supposed to be done. And they can say that without fear uh, of the board or the superintendent. And, and that's what we want to know. And, and we, now, 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 now we're not going to assume it's going to take a long time to do that. We're going to assume that this can be done now, right away, that if you use a credit card, it must be spent for educational purposes, and it must be documented by the finance department or whoever that auditor is. And the school board is going to be looking to make sure that that takes place. And we're not going to wait no long time to see that. We want to see that on a monthly basis. And, and I have been told that by board members, and I totally agree with them. So we we pushing that forward. So we don't don't we don't want to hear don't take no long time to do this. <laughs> well, this is going to have to be done on a monthly basis. Yeah, the long time would be the internal audit process. The P card that process specifically could happen, and it has happened uh, no, already. No, it must happen right away. It, it's already happened. Yeah. Now the procedures. Let's talk a little bit about what we're talking about with the P cards. The process with the P cards was that somebody within the internal audit department was physically looking at every monthly reconciliation, every transaction that was purchased with a P card. That's great. That's a great control. I couldn't recommend anything more than that. You know, as long as they're good, making good decisions, they're going to catch if not all proprietors, most of them, you know, because they're looking at every transaction. The difference here, so I'm not saying that the P card controls were not functioning well, because they were looking at every single transaction that went through there. Now, what, what our problem with the process was 
the internal auditor was responsible, not specifically the internal auditor, but the internal audit department was responsible for carrying out that control. So it was all in one house? Yeah. And you think it should have been separate and more independent of that house? Well, the internal auditor, what the internal auditor should be doing is going around saying, hey, this control's not operating as designed, or they're not doing this control, they're not doing this control, or they are doing this control. He's making an assessment as to whether or not those controls were actually operating. Now, I wouldn't want <clears throat> my internal auditor to be looking at his own house and telling me, well, yeah, of course I'm doing all the controls I'm supposed to be doing. I want him independent from that, looking at other people's departments saying, yes, they're doing those controls. That gives you an additional level of assurance. So, so as, I, as I understand it uh, from Dr. Atkinson, even though we don't have that person with the title of internal auditor that she had when she came, she has, with a meager budget, restructured it to separate uh, the internal auditor from the finance department. Is that correct, Dr. Atkinson? That's correct. And, and this person can do the kind of things that we expect can ensure uh, that these purchase cards and P cards are being used in the proper way and they are not being used uh, for some improper expenditures. That, that's our expectation and that's what we request. Um, yes, ma'am. Do, do we know, uh, well, I know Dr. Atkinson, there, where, what, who are the people that have the P cards? Uh, you know, are they, and why do they need them? I, I don't know, I'm just asking you. I don't know about that. No, I, I don't know who all has them. They have them based on whatever our policy is. So um, do you know, I, I know there's a, I don't have a specific policy in front of me to remember who um, gets them. We can get you a list of everyone who has one, but usually a department head uh, who right. is in charge of a budget. Uh, will have access to a card. It, it, uh, you know, I was up until a few years ago anti-P card until I had to come on board because of its efficiency and the fact that you could save a lot of money by using them. Uh, I, there is an issue that they could cause problems with fraud, I, they, but that's why you have these and you have to put into uh, controls. But they are, they, if used right, it can be very effective. Okay. And and there is a monthly report done on the usage. That's what I'm hearing. If we, if there can be a report. If, if there is not one that we, I don't know if we give it to the board or, or but there is, we can produce a P card report. Yeah, we would like to have that. How would we know? Do we need to pass yeah. a policy to that effect? Huh? Um, I wouldn't, now, this is policy and all that kind of stuff, but you're, what we're talking about, what you're asking for is a detailed listing of all P-card transactions. What, what, I can't, this is why I keep bringing up the internal audit function. You should have a guy, person, in that internal audit role looking at this stuff for you guys as a board. They should, and, and I know there was some community, there was some discussion as, and confusion as to, who that person reports to. You know, the, the internal audit associate, the real specific, that they have a direct line to the board, more specifically your, your audit committee. So they should be meeting with your audit committee on a regular basis. That's, that clearly is stated within you know, the standards for, for your internal audit function. So I wouldn't necessarily, I don't want y'all to get the wrong impression that, hey, there's issues with P cards, that there's a, a need to get a bunch of detailed records and y'all review the records. What we would recommend is that you get an internal audit function and you sit down with that internal auditor as an audit committee and you say, what are we doing to verify that these procedures are, are being followed? What are our procedures? What are we doing to verify they're, they're being followed? And the internal audit director at that point gives you a report, talks about the procedures that they're doing on a periodic, continuous audit basis. That's what should be happening here. Okay, Dr. Ma Atkinson, where was that department? I think um, the internal auditor was, is not with us, 
So what happened to the people in that department? We still have people who do the audits. Oh, okay. under, yes. Let me share this too, just for clarity. When I came on board, and the whole internal auditor thing bubbled up. It bubbled up to me because the board had questions about why are we, um, why, are, why are they over counting the pennies and missing the big things? And I'm just gonna be direct about it. And so I said, well, who gave you your marching orders in terms of where you're auditing, what you're looking for? Because I'm used to auditors looking at the controls and processes to see if they're being followed so the checks and balances are there, not going over to the school, actually picking the document for internal audit. That, that could be required if they suspect something. And so there were issues around who was directing the work and what I, the reason I went to, um, got involved with it was because of you all's concerns around why are you looking over here and not looking over here and who was telling them what to do. And what uh, Sachs said to me at that meeting, and I, I don't know if Mr. who was there when we had that Sachs meeting, I said, what is the directive for the board to be in compliance with whatever that Sachs or Advanced Ed had uh, shared? And uh, what was told to me was we never said they had to have an internal auditor. Okay, I'm just, I'm, 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 where's Mr. Bowen? Who was with me at that meeting? Okay, and so I said, um, what do we need to do to be in compliance? The issue was, the only thing SAC said, they said, was that the um, direction or the who was giving the person direction on where they needed to look or audit or what they needed to do, that was the conflict. So I don't know what occurred prior to my getting here, but I know that when I got here, there were real conflicts, and then there, was some, there were issues with what was being reported at the board meeting relative to that audit report. So I've tried to get that straightened out, cleared up. I've gotten some advice from uh, different people who have different audit functions and views of audits, and I think we're getting that straight. The Budget Audit Finance Committee, um, on, I, I guess, um, if, and we can talk through it in, later on, but you know, somehow we have to organize ourselves so that there's a uh, reporting, a uh, functional report that satisfies not only what the auditors are looking for in terms of internal controls, but frankly satisfies me as superintendent that I know that things are going well and satisfies the board knowing that nobody's, um, you know, committing any fraud or having any issues. So um, we have to work through what that needs to look like and, and wh where those controls will be and who the person is. If the, the, if the auditor is reporting directly to the board, there were issues with that when I came into the district. And so I'm not, I didn't make those up, okay? So I'm just saying, I, I wanna be clear that I wasn't trying to get rid of something that, that um, somebody had said had to be here. I was taking my direction from the conflict that I saw um, with respect to what that was supposed to do, and there was a conflict about, well, the, um, and we looked at other school districts to see how does it work in larger districts like ours, and, and so I think we'll come up with a good model so that we um, can meet the needs of the, of the district with regard to auditing and reporting, but um, I'm only sharing that with you because I, I want to be real clear that I tried to get in it and fix the problems which seem to be who's directing the work and then why are these reports just dealing with this and not the high level things, okay? I, I do want to reiterate that Dr. Axon's absolutely correct on all that. The, the reporting function has to be direct access to the board, not that they report to the board, okay? Ultimately, employees report or under the superintendent. So 
I just wanted to make, clarify that if I misled anybody, but there's got to be a direct access to the board, okay, or the audit committee. So it's not that they would report to the board, but they would have unfiltered access to the board. That's it. So, so we understand that what, what we're asking and, and, and want to be assured of, uh, that we have somebody in place as an internal auditor or some kind of purchase person uh, to make certain that these P cards and credit card purchases are reconciled on a monthly basis and they comply with school policies. We, we don't want that to be open-ended. We want somebody in authority uh, to ensure that that has taken place so that I won't mistakenly, as a board member, use my card, and mistakenly or intentionally, use my card to purchase something that I should not have purchased. And it will be brought to our attention on a monthly basis rather than five months later, like they did at Georgia Tech. So. Yeah. That's what we are asking that the superintendent and the finance department have in place. Yeah. And we agree with you, and you just made the point just at the very last second. It is the finance, we believe that it's the finance department, your finance department's responsibility to review those transactions, not necessarily your internal control, your internal audit function. That should be at a much higher level, not at, a, at an individual transaction level. So we agree that it should be someone designated in the finance department to review those transactions for completeness and that to ensure that they are valid and that they are actual expenditures that benefit the children of DeKalb County. That's right. I'll not be no gray area. Go right ahead, sir. Okay. Um, the last issue is an, we did note one improper uh, expenditure related to uh, an, a salary that was being paid related to the uh, school foundation. And I, I do want to reiterate that this is management did bring this to our attention as part of their uh, their due diligence in trying to uh, be good fiscal stewards so but they, we did note that issue oh and there's one one last item on page 12 is uh, the splost audit performance audit and I think that um, y'all have an RFP out to get that but I think they just haven't got there yet any questions on any of those? It's almost like uh, I just do whatever I want to do and let the consequences fall where they may. And the more we ask questions, the more it seems to irritate people. But the public is looking at us to be good um, stewards of the taxpayer's money. So when we're asking questions, it's not because we don't have anything else to do. We have a life and other obligations just like anybody else. But we also have this responsibility of educating children. And um, so I just want you to know this issue has come up several times. Okay. Okay. On page 12, we have other matters. Uh, this is just things that we want to bring to everybody's attention that may uh, affect future years with the financial statements. Um, the first item is new uh, GASB standards. GASB is the uh, Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Uh, they issue statements fairly often nowadays, but um, these are the ones that will be affecting the school district or could affect the school districts in the next coming years. I'm not going to go through all of these. They're mainly here for everybody's just to read through. Uh, none of them is really going to affect. Well, there is one 57 that comes into play 2012, but I don't think it's going to affect you guys unless um, y'all become a fiscal agent for pension. No. <laughs> On page 14, 
Uh, there is the sales tax collections. Excuse me, Mr. Okay. Do we have a question, sir? 12. Um, could you elaborate a little bit about the school district received assets of $5 million in slots um, okay. process during the year and did not receive? Okay. Did not, uh, did not receive a performance audit and review. Could you talk about that for a moment? Okay. Uh, Georgia Code requires all school districts that gives above $5,000 worth of SPLOS receipts. They require them to get a performance audit, whereas the, uh, the performance auditor would come out there and review expenditure transactions to verify that those transactions were proper in accordance with a SPLOS referendum. Um, so in other words, if the money that let's say we had 375 million in that splash, these the items we identified through this process, we would identify that the money came in and go down and make sure that these items were done. Is, is that the the yeah they, they were with board policy yes sir that oh. basically that you have a splash referendum. There's a law out there that dictates, you know, what a capital expenditure is and educational, ex you know, purpose is. They have to go through there and verify that all the expenditures are in accordance with the laws, the SPLOS referendum, and board policy. All right, so this particular report falls into our last SPLOS. We just approved one, so this would fall back into our SPLOS 3. This should occur yearly. This should occur yearly? Yes, sir. Um, so that so what it's saying we had ten five million dollars extra for that year in the block. No, y'all had well in excess of four five million dollars. It's right. just I'm, go ahead. You'll you'll have you know DeKalb County will have to have one every year, and I think the last one was two thousand ten. Yeah, and I think yeah, I I think y'all had a firm and then kind of dropped it and went and got another RFP, and I think that's in process. Is that right? Hydraulic tax, the RFP for the spots all in process. Yeah, the RFP's been sent out, it's in process. I'm still lost. If you what now? Can someone help? La last, <clears throat> in 2011, the audit that's required. Um, was not done, not completed for some reason, correct? Yes. No. For the SPLOST. And every year, SPLOST dollars must be audited. And so the audit for 2011, FY 2011, was not completed. It is now going to be completed. Right. Okay. Now, we'll the, have uh, for 2012. the audit for FY 12, I, I don't know if they do them at the same time or how that works. Um, That'll Mr. be Prone, based on your RFP, your engagement with them. That'll be dependent on when you get down and do your contract with them, your engagement letter. So. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I don't know how far you But we'll get it caught up and make sure that, that for FY12 it is completed in a timely fashion. Ms. Jasper. Okay. Uh, page 14. Oh, I'm sorry. Th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Um, just a question, and, and I, maybe we can't discuss this here. Maybe this is an executive session issue, but um, who was responsible for that um, omission? I, I mean, it, and this was before you were here, right? This was correct. So, so, so. The, the superintendent at the time, I guess, be, bears the ultimate responsibility. I mean. Well, am I wrong? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. Well, you know, um, I can't say who was supposed to have made sure that was done outside of, you know, it's the responsibility. I, you're right. We have to make sure everything is done. Right. I mean, you, you're responsible but for everything, right? I do think that because. Um, the position. You, and, and, and I'm not going to make any, um, you know, excuses or anything, but I do know that because we had an interim mm -hmm. i don't know what that interim would have known and know the right questions to ask you know and and making mm -hmm. sure it was done i would have thought that person the folks overseeing the splost 
program would have known that it needed to be audited annually because mm -hmm. this is the first BLOSS project we've mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. and you had people involved in it year to year. So um, it is a financial function and I do think that um, the CFO is responsible for making sure that the financial loops are closed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so and somewhere. reporting if it's not getting done, then to the person who can ensure that whoever should be getting it done gets it done. Right. So, so and so that would be a sort of a combination too between the the department running the SPLOS program and the finance department, and of course whoever sitting in the superintendent chair at the time, not you, it wasn't you. But I mean that's the that's the linear track of personnel over who are ultimately responsible for for that. It, I mean those two departments and the superintendent is that. Is that so, so right? the question I'm sorry not to uh, and, and maybe we, this is something we can discuss. I don't I don't want to belabor that point, but I'm just. No. I mean I think that's a big error. I mean our big omission. Was that the only year we didn't have a splash audit? That didn't we have splash audits in all other years? I think there was one year that 2009. I think one year the uh, audit firm would not release the report. I think that was 2009. What well, 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 would not release a report? What does that mean? <laughs> you you would have to talk to them. So so they did and they came in. We had somebody do it, but then just said, "I'm out." walk away? I mean, we don't know. We have to talk you to them. Have to talk Do to you them. know who that firm is? I mean, that's a matter of public record, right? Somebody would have to have that firm's so name. So I'm talking from, from your position as a state auditor, don't y'all have records? Didn't y'all have, we've been having splash since 2004, I think. Yes, sir. And haven't we been auditing them every year? E yes, sir. I think that 2009 was the only year that wasn't released. Yes, sir. So 2009 wasn't released. I think You're it's using the word released. And I'm, I'm not playing gotcha with you, just so you know. I'm, it's I'm 2009. Just, yeah. Okay, 2009 wasn't released, so I can look back and perhaps investigate that and see what happened there. Yeah. And then 2009 wasn't done. I mean, 2011 wasn't done. I mean, in reality, I mean, think about 2009. It's not, it doesn't take a lot to put two and two together why they wouldn't want to release the report. I, I know. Well, I mean, want to and have to or. They don't have to I do mean, anything. I said, well, yeah. I mean, if you pay for something, don't you have to get a product if you pay for it? I mean, aren't they obligated? I don't know how no. that works. There, there was something going on in 2009. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. This is just fun times in the cab, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I do. I do. I really do. So I'm just oh, okay. curious well, as to what well, the... I guess it's a legal issue here. Is that correct? I, look, they, they don't want... Yeah. Look I mean, at our trusty to lawyer them. coming there to you your go. rescue. Thank yes, you. there you go. Yeah, I might suggest we not discuss this further in open Thank session. You. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really. Sorry. I'm. I'm sorry, sir. I can't. I can't hear Miss. I yield to Miss Copeland Wood if that is okay with the chair. If I know that the chair. Thank you, Miss Miss Wood. You gotta talk about that rule you had because uh, we this this won't be operable operable unless you say so. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't support that. But what I'm saying is. I have my 2009 audit. Now, did you say something about that in this audit? Was that referenced? Oh, but no, she said, no, that's a good question. Uh, that's, not, that's not blaming anybody because I'm, I'm telling you how I feel. The, the whomever is the head is responsible. Can't go down there and pick up the underlings and make them responsible for it. Or what the uh, superintendent should do, but anyway, is it in here? I, I, I'd have to look. I don't know. I'd have to look. You know, Miss Copeland Wood, I'm very curious as you are. Maybe we can take that offline um, as our attorney suggested, and and we'll follow up because I. I yeah, because I want to know if that was cited in this audit. 
we, we've been advised by the council I understand to, that, but I, my question to take this offline. And in reference to the speaker. And I have 2008, too, with me. Ms. Wood, just for your information, the rule is, as chair, I control the mics. But it and, should and be, that's it should one be, of the, should be that's one of the responsibilities the, you the give me as chair. And we had never heard that before. Well, I'm, so I think we need to we need to talk about that. That's one of the the privileges you give the chair. Thank no, you. No, I no, welcome. No, no. Thank, so, you, thank you, Doctor. I'm done with my comment. Thank you. Thank Question. you, ma'am. No, it isn't. <sighs> We, we'll, we'll, we'll defer discussion of that splash thing and go to the next one, sir, please. Okay. Other matters. Uh, uh, other matters, page 14. Um, sales tax collections for uh, Department of Revenues, we just wanted to point out the fact that they've uh, done, done certain procedures to speed up their collection process, so the July in the previous years, you'd accrue both July and August, um, but now just July is, they're saying they're one month behind on paying those uh, tax receipts. Um, the last point on other items would be um, the QB revenue recognition. I do know that you guys want uh, CAFR, I think is what you said, and uh, we just wanted to bring to everybody's attention that there is an explanatory paragraph in the state CAFR that basically says that um, the the court and the receivable for uh, QB, the July and August QB, isn't isn't in line with GASB 33. Isn't in line with generally accepted accounting principles. However. The Department of Audit's viewpoint, the State of Georgia's viewpoint is saying, well, the State of Georgia is showing a liability, the school, the school board should be showing a receivable to be in line there. So because, though, the state CAFR shows an explanatory ca uh, paragraph, if y'all are going to do the GAFR or doing a uh, CAFR, the GFAO? GF GFOA will not give y'all a certificate of excellence because of that. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that aspect of it. Right. Um, any questions? No, we, unless superintendent has a comment, go right ahead. I just, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood what he just said. I, <laughs> <laughs> just rushing through this. Because uh, he used a lot of... Uh, to rush out of here, but <laughs> take your time and explain what you were talking about there, will you please? What are you talking about? Tell us again. Okay. Um, currently, yeah, you can come on up here and do that. Yeah, let me, let me help you out. Just... Uh, not that he didn't know what he's talking about, but the, st the state of Georgia, as you well know, the state of Georgia and how you do business is you have contractual obligations with your teachers that go from, I guess now, August, school starts in August now through July. Or some school districts still pay their teachers from September through August. So we have a contractual obligation. So the state of Georgia, according to the state um, appropriation act the first two months of the fiscal year july and august where you are paying your teachers for work that they have done prior to the close of the fiscal year that school ended in may so they have contractually they, their they their contract is fully done they are like you owe us the money the state appropriation act however is written so that at july 1st the State Appropriation Act goes into effect. So in effect, according to the general accounting principles that are promulgated by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, is that actually that is not a revenue that you should recognize because on June 30th, it is not a liability of the state because they can't pay you the money until July 1st. So that being said, we realize that it would be misleading to exclude in the state's CAFR a liability to you guys because you have earned the money. 
Your teachers have earned the money. You have earned the QBE allotment. So what they've done is we have an explanatory paragraph in the state's CAFRA saying that we believe that it would be misleading to exclude, although it is not in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. That being said, the GFOA, which is the Government Financial Officers Association, is refusing to give the state of Georgia a certificate of excellence on the state's comprehensive annual financial report. And we also are aware that many of the school districts here in the, surround, in the metropolitan Atlanta that do issue a comprehensive annual financial report, that they too are not getting a certificate of excellence from the GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, because the, of the state's issue with this you know, explanatory paragraph. Furthermore, I will say, though, however, that the Association of School Board Officials, the ASVO organization, is given certificates of excellence because they do not see that this is an issue that would cause any, any state or, any, or the um, school district's CAFRs to be misleading on, for their financial reporting purposes. Is that clear as mud? But I'm just saying that the, all the, if, if we could not, if you were unable and we were unable to accrue the receivable, the QBE allotment that is due to every school district in the state of Georgia, all 180, if we, you were unable to accrue that revenue to meet the needs of the expenditures that are already posted on your books, every, just nearly every school district in the state of Georgia, except for one or two, would be showing a deficit fund balance. And that, you know, what that would do to your bond ratings. They would just tumble off a cliff, so. That's one of the reasons why we continue to say that we would we believe it is a earned revenue for all the school districts. I understand. Well, all right. Uh, any question or comments, anybody? We understand. We you explained to us why we don't have that too much money. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We um, earned it, but we don't have it. Page 15, the last page of this is um, just want to give you a brief synopsis of the additional procedures that we were requested to perform. And I just want to keep in mind that at any point in time that you guys want us to look into any specific thing, feel free to contact us. We'll be happy to do that. Financial related, of course. Um, but the first first uh, thing that we looked at was we looked at, we, we were, Form procedures to verify the expenditures over $100,000 were, were, were obtaining uh, board approval as required by your policy manual. Um, we did do three separate samples. We targeted two of those samples around the time frame where uh, grant periods are ending, which that would create a pressure for somebody to maybe get an expenditure through that um, wouldn't, be a pr uh, wouldn't have gotten board approved. Approval, and then we performed a sample over the remaining population. So we looked at about 60 transactions in total of that population. Um, based on our testings, we didn't, we don't feel that there was a systemic problem related to that. 15. 15. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? All right. And the other procedure that we were we performed. Now this, I think, this was based on uh, Dr. Walker. You requested us to um, provide a reconciliation from the board reports um, submitted to you guys to the audited fun, uh, fund balance, and um, we performed procedures. We took those reports um, off your website that, for June 30, 2011, and we verified the amounts were derived from the general ledger. Um, there were timing differences between what's reported to us for audit and what's reported to you guys. Significant timing differences. Basically, what this would make Huh? Okay. Basically what that would mean would, they're reporting to you on a cash basis, we're reporting on a accrual basis. So you guys as a board, the information that you'd be getting would not be the best information to make decisions with. So that reconciliation, it's in attachment 
see, you can see for uh, the general fund, $36 million worth of timing and rounding differences, those rounding, a little bitty, but mainly timing differences. So basically the, the fund balances were reported to you guys as a board for ge total general operations was $82 million. What's not included in that fund balance is QB accruals, revenues, and more importantly, your July and August payroll. Just like what Suzanne said before, your teachers have earned all this money, so you got to record all that liability. So the, the fund balance that's reporting to you guys is overstated. In this instance, $36 million. And the other items on the reconciling items you can see were financial statement adjustments, adjustments that the financial people made to the actual financial statements. But it's significant, these timing differences, significance between the general fund and the, and the capital projects. Capital projects was $4 million, which is a lot less than the $36 million, obviously, but for capital projects, that'd be all your contracts and, and in retainage payables. So the, the thing that we want to drive home here is if you as a board, you guys want credible information to make decisions, you got to get on an accrual basis. You got to get a financial system in place that will allow you to do that efficiently. Whereas right now, your current operations, not really feasible to do so. Any questions? Any, any questions, anybody? Is that kind of what you wanted us to do, Dr. Walker? I just yeah. So sure. make okay. that last statement again to the board. The difference between the cash and the accrual basis. Cash what and you accrual. Recommending that, what were you saying? We're recommending that you got the information being reported to you is on an accrual basis, which is what the same reporting that you did, you report to um, your your bond rating and all that. The the difference between cash and accrual is your payables and stuff. But the reason for accrual basis it it. It softens the highs and lows between one year to the next. If you're on a cash basis, you're going to have some spikes where you dispersed a lot of money, and you'll have some spikes where you didn't disperse money. So your fund balance will fluctuate quite a bit. Let me ask now, a specific question then. Yeah. If we want the cash basis, how would that uh, situation we deal with QBE, where, where we owed too much for teachers that we have not received from the state, how would that figure into the cash basis? Because you haven't paid that money out at June 30th, you would not be reporting those expenditures. So would that affect our bond rating? <laughs> no, because your bond rating is going to be based on audited numbers, the numbers that we audit, so no. It's only going to affect your ability as a board to make good decisions. Feel free. Dr. Walker, I'm, I'm, we are, <clears throat> what, what the auditors are proposing and what I have proposed is to go to the accrual basis, not the cash. I don't know if you said that. Wrong. So, no, no, that's what I, you, 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 you want to go to the accrual? Correct. We are on a cash, and the cash is not what the bond uh, rating agencies look at. They look at the audited financial, which in the end, five months after the year ends, we end up on the accrual because that's what we use. What, we're <clears throat> what we want to go to is every month report to you on an accrual. And that's what I'm working on now. And that's been the goal since I got here. And that's why I've reported out at the, month, uh, the meetings. That's uh, why I was, I was that maybe I misunderstood him. I thought he was stressing we need to go to the cash. That, that no, 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 he, he, no. Uh, oh, okay, Nance, I'm sorry, but I was, I, was, I was trying to clarify. I thought you were saying we no. should go to the cash base. I don't know how I misunderstood you on that. Go, go ahead. That's, uh, thank you, Dr. Moore. So um, the timing and rounding differences for the general operation fund balance came to a negative 
five million. So they're getting yes, that retired. So the the timing and rounding differences for the fund balance for general operations is 36.5 to the negative, so. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so the, um, in the ending fund balance was, for the audited financial, it was 53 million. So you're saying that off of that, we need to take the 36 off of that to get a true, no. No, no. So, no. so talk me through that. Um, what was reported to the board is the 82 million dollars. Is the 82 at the top, okay. Yep. okay. And then you have the, the timing differences of 36, mm -hmm. less okay. the financial statement gotcha. adjustments. Okay. Gets you to an audited number, okay. a good number of 53 million. 53, million. okay. Did I get you an answer? Yeah, I, I need to look back at the audit. If, yeah. if I may, you. since, yeah, um, and, and this is pertinent to what we're going to be talking about at the next board meeting, the uh, work session, uh, and I brought to uh, the agenda setting. Um, as I've been concerned about the fund balance since I came in, uh, if you, uh, when you receive the financial, if you have not, I don't know, Margaret, if they've already gotten it, um, the cash uh, fund balance that we're looking at is 24 million on the June draft, uh, and every year um, we that drops as it did from 80 to 50, anywhere from 30 to 40. Seven, almost 50 million. So, if that holds true, then we are probably going to project a uh, negative fund balance. And I'm <clears throat> yeah, cruel. Cash is what you'll see. It's 24 million. It looks okay. Going to an accrual, which is more timely, it would be in the negative. And then when I narrow that down, what I would do on a monthly basis is start with that new number. That's the accrued basis, and always account for. Uh, what Mr. Freeman was talking about is the, the uh, payables that you're gonna, you know you have that are gonna be attributed back to that fiscal year you account for them so that you always have a good picture of your fund balance. Did, did you get, everybody get that? Mr. Walmart. I just wanna say one thing, that this is not the first time that, that in the last five years that we've been in this situation where it looks like you may have a deficit fund balance. And Mr. Womack asked a question earlier of my boss, Claire, earlier and believe in 2009, 2009, the audited financial statements had a deficit fund balance. Sat down with your former CFO and his staff. We brainstormed together. I recommended, are there any expenditures that you made in other in the other funds that could have been paid with general with um, by splost you know so that uh, this was an answer to directly to a question mr. Womack had but yes we did recommend that the board consider moving some funds from the splost projects into a general fund so that you will not be showing a deficit fund balance they d that happened in 2009. We did re make that recommendation, and we did make an there, we did make an audit adjustment to move funds out of SPLOST into back into the general fund. It was for a technology upgrades at schools, which is part of us, which is a which is part of your SPLOST referendum. But I know that it has called some sort of controversy, but I want to make sure that you understand that carrying a deficit fund balance in your general fund is not a good thing. It will affect your bond rating. Your bond rating, whatever it is now, you show a deficit fund, audited deficit fund balance, your bond rating will go down again. So in the future when you, which really is no big deal if you can carry your projects, your SPLOS projects without forward financing with bonds. But the past time, the last, the SPLOS 3 project, I believe you forward financed the $200 million. You're gonna pay a lot of interest if your bond rating deteriorates again. So you have to consider what you have to do to make ends meet so that your general fund in your audited financial statements has a positive fund balance. And right now it sounds like it may not. And that's what happened in 2009 when we recommended that you uh, have expenditures moved to cover 
expenditures, over expenditures in the general fund so that you would not have a deficit fund balance. So that, that's what we do for you guys. We try to help you to help. find areas where you can save your taxpayers money here in the DeKalb County. And that's what we did in 2009. And I know, I hate to bring that up, but I know that that was a question by Mr. Womack earlier. Dr. Atkinson and then Mr. McChesney. The question I would have is, did, did you inform the board mm -hmm. so that they could take a proactive stance going forward in planning for that next budget year? Because having a board know that you really were in deficit spending versus not, to me, is, in, is significant. It's important. And I think the board wants to be prudent and would have said, well, we need to make some adjustments, adjustments because we can't keep taking money from or moving projects to Splost or back and forth. And the question I had was, who was informed that that had to happen? That's a good question, and I don't remember exactly how, I don't remember talking about that at, at, in front of the board, Dr. Walker. I really don't. Um, it didn't. It didn't come up. But I mean, your CFO and the superintendent were very well aware of the deficit right. situation. I can assure you of that. It didn't come to the board, but it appeared to have been a good thing. Yeah. So. Uh, yes. Uh, and one, we will have better did. communication with you guys in the future. All we have to do is be invited, and we're like we did this time, and be invited, and we'll be glad to come and discuss right. anything you need with 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 you. Uh, uh, Mr. McChesney and Ms. Jester. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Uh, my question was the superintendent's question. That answer is significant to this board. And I don't remember anything about such. Uh, I don't remember anything about a lot of things you all said today, which has been very enlightening to me. But uh, to address something Mr. Freeman said, I want to make sure I understand this. A few moments ago when you gave the analogy about putting money in different buckets, which is one I like to use and often when I'm trying to explain it to folks, is it possible under the cash system that money was the same money was moved from bucket to bucket so that when we picked up the bucket and looked at it, it appeared to be there? No. No. That, that does not happen that way. Okay, so if you, if you looked in two buckets at the same time, you wouldn't get a, an erroneous view. Correct. Okay, thank you. Ms. Jester? Thank you, Dr. Walker. And um, Dr. Atkinson, thank you for asking that question because that was um, just like Mr. McChesney, that was what was on my mind. And I just quick comment to you, Dr. Atkinson, the, um, and just so the auditors know, you may already know this, Dr. Atkinson has decided to um, manage our SPLOS program. Uh, I'm going to say it without debt financing. So, uh, so I'm thinking. I think she said she was thinking about that. Well, I hope Ms. she's Jester. thinking about thinking about it. So you know what I'm saying? But um, I just want to say how prudent that is looking, isn't it? And I know you don't like that. That's okay. As a, because I, I commend okay. you. And I know the Fulton County Board of Education as well as Cobb County Board of Education are not carrying any long-term debt to forward finance their, their SPLOS pro project. So I would... Yeah, know. well, commend her. It was her idea. Let me, it, I'm going to give there, credit. It's, it's she, out there, so... She takes, she takes the abuse from me, too, so... So I have to give her credit when I got Well, you know she takes that from me. So I have to say when I think she's made a good decision. So that's a good decision. Our superintendent has just got us a 10 of almost $100 million of free money. <laughs> There's almost no such thing money. as free money. <laughs> and, and, and that's what, well, anyway, we, we, we won't deal with that. Go right ahead, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. That is all I have. If y'all have any questions or requests. <laughs> Any, any questions or comments from the board? Well, I want to really uh, commend you and thank you for the job you do as state auditors and specifically what you do for the DeKalb County School System. Uh, the thing you did in 2009, even though board members may not have been aware, uh, but from my vantage point, it was an effort to try to help us uh, stay at the top of our game and not have a negative impact on our bond rating. And we weren't just taking money from Splash, but it was a 
bookkeeping uh, maneuver that you could use to help us uh, come in with a fund balance that would give us a little better standing. So I appreciate that. But one of the things I especially appreciate today is the fact that we've had so much misconception about the role you play and, 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 and how you do auditing and what it means. And the thing that has been made manifest clear to me is that you do a very credible and responsible job uh, that make our system accountable uh, to the stakeholders that look at us. Uh, when you say that uh, the money is going where it was supposed to go and you reconcile this by tracking it, uh, that make us credible in my mind to the eyes of the public, no matter how many people try to discredit it by saying they want different other kinds of audits. Your audit has been legitimate and credible, and I personally appreciate it. And uh, Sayer want to make the last word, I guess. I don't see any other announcements. So I yield to Sarah, one of our senior members, for her to be brief with her comments to you. Ms. Wood. Just like you are. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what I want to say is I was going to give you some kudos, but now I'll take them all back for asking the asking questions and, and getting information that um, from the auditors. Uh, it has been refreshing to me because I always felt that you knew what you were doing and it was an unbiased uh, report that is rendered to us and probably all of the, um, well, all of the uh, public school systems in Georgia. So I just want you to know how much I appreciate it and that um, if there's anything that, we are, that we're not clear on, we could always call you to get clarity. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will second move and seconded by everybody. Thank you all. You all have a great, great evening. Thank you.